my screen, just give me a minute. Okay, so we are here basically uh, to like see how we can use Revit to optimize reward detailing. And as a guest, we have uh, Mr. Vinav Yadav. He's a structure designer at ISA, uh, general consultants. They basically work in the structure part uh, along with ITA. They're working with NCRTC and a lot of other uh, developers. So uh, I'll just explain the agenda first. Uh, I'll just introduce you about the company first. Then we'll have an expert speech, uh, speech by Abhinav sir. And then I'll explain how we how we can use BIM for the rebar detailing, how the workflow works over here. Then I'll also show you a demo for the rebar modeling and explain how bar bending schedule uh, can be taken in Revit. Then we'll have a short Q&A session where you can ask your questions and uh, we me and a bin of sir will try to answer all of them. So as you all might know, Cape Ricot is uh, India's leading design and construction management technology solution provider for the AC industry basically. Uh, we have a lot of customers, 20,000 plus customers uh, all, all over India and we are located at Delhi, Bangalore, Mumbai, Hyderabad and other locations too. Uh, we have a team of around 250 people. The the technical people are there and there are more than 40 plus BIM experts over here. And we are an OEM certified professional training company. So uh, that is about Capricot. And now Capricot is uh, an Arkins company. Capricot is now an Arkins company. So uh, we are situated all around the world. So if you see we are in Australia, we are in uh, Europe as well as in America. So we are a part of that now. I'll just explain about Abhinav sir. So he holds a degree of master's uh, in technology uh, and has the structural engineering from SEPT University. Uh, he's working as a structural design engineer with uh, AI, AIGC, ISA basically. Uh, in the general consultant, it is a general consultancy firm for Delhi Merit RRTS uh, corridor of NCRTC. He has comprehensive experience in the structural design or about experience of 6.5 years in large scale infrastructure projects, including RRTS. Uh, he holds experience in the field of BIM managing for UK based design uh, project museum in India. So uh, he has a lot of experience about BIM as well as for the structure design. So he'll be there to guide us how he how BIM helps him uh, in working on those projects. So I'll just leave it to you, sir. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Vatsal. Thank you, Vatsal, for my introduction and welcoming you all to this webinar. So I hope this will be a very informative um, webinar for you all. And before starting, I would say, although I'm a structure engineer, but uh, there won't be any values. There won't be any subtraction, addition, or some bending moment shear force for you to get some threads So no, no, nothing like that. But yes, we will be discussing uh, uh, about all the features of how the BIM platform actually works and how it can be beneficial to uh, to us. So yeah, let me just, okay. So let me just start with the presentation which can actually guide you, guide everyone to this uh, platform. So let me share my screen first. I hope my screen is visible. What's it? Yes, it's visible. Okay, okay, so let me start. 
so what i'm uh, actually want to explain is being a structure design engineer um, we use a lot of softwares but the dependency dependency should not be on the software but the dependency should be on how to execute how to come up with the final execution of design so whatever in, whatever is there in our mind whether it's an architect whether it's a structure engineer whether it's an mep design builder whosoever it is they all should come into a single platform and should develop one basic single design that should that should actually give the uh, insight of what is happening on the site and it should come out as a single entity because the building doesn't know that whether it's a structured building or whether it's architectural whosoever is made finally it's a building which has to serve the purpose whatever building it is for the utilities so we have to be very very particular about whatever what we want to achieve so yes for a st structure engineer if i'm particularly talking about then the drawings speak more about the structure engineer than his calculations which are which are behind which are the backbone for the design drawings but as those drawings and those if they are developed in a better way uh, visually sir? more effective way yeah uh, so your first slide is only visible no other slide and we can yes yes, yes. i will entire... i will just briefing yeah i will just briefing uh, and i will are you like using the... two screens no, no, no. I will be going ahead with just time on this first slide itself. I will be going forward. Okay, okay. okay just time okay. briefing what I am going through. Then I will be again explaining okay, everything. Sir. Okay. So yes, now let me start. So basic my content content will resolve uh, revolve around like BIM. Then what is the importance of BIM? Then the examples which we which we have seen, which we have faced, which I have experienced in my life, which I have seen. Then there is CSD development, which we really go ahead um, in our day to day life. While we develop the drawings, they are the common services drawings, which is a which is where this BIM platform actually helps us a lot. Then this helps in aid to visualize. So how we visualize the things and our experience, uh, which I will be sharing uh, with from different sites, uh, which will I will be showing you that how it happens and how it is helping us this BIM platform to deal with such site issues. So what is a BIM? So everyone knows that since we are here and we have heard a lot about it so it is a building information modeling so what what all we can do is documentation fabrication construction of 4d and 5d level of drawings then construction we can prepare a logics for that we can prepare operation and maintenance everyone is doing this we can program it so what is programming yes it is very important like parametric concept so basically, if you can develop if uh, everyone is knowing that what is a beam so beam has some depth and it has some width so it all works uh, it all works depending on the how the architectural need that beam to be in shape and everything and how we want this uh, by actually the design by how the analysis and design actually uh, requires um, gives the requirement of the depth and the other structural and structural parameters so if i do a parametric design behind that so whatever the load is if x is the load then the value comes out to be some x value then for that if if i can freeze the depths and for multiple depths, if I can change the parameters, so I can get a parametric design out of it. So that is called as programming. So we can program those in the BIM platform. So that is very useful. Then when you come to modeling analysis, yes, there are many, many platforms where you can model analysis and design such stuffs. And at the same time, you can detail, you can go into the depth of detailing from the from any point of view, structural architecture and MEP. And that is where these kind of platforms actually help you. Interface planning, like if there is a, uh, if there is, you want to uh, actually see the junction where these all these all departments meet. So that is where interface comes into picture. And you can very well develop the interface planning much before you're going to site and face such problems. You can very well do uh, well behind the, uh, on the software itself before you go to the site. Then scheduling the activities it is very important since not just uh, finance, but it is also important that you uh, club the time in, in, in that. So that is the 5D platform where you work where the time is also one of the main features. And so scheduling activity is very important where, and this platform actually helps you doing that scheduling activities and visualizing. So what end, uh, what with the end result that would be important, that will be important that you visualize the things before you go ahead in the site. So everything is well planned so that on site it is easy to convey and convince people and uh, make your client happy with whatever you are uh, giving him as the output. So that is the basic thing. Now BIM in structural engineering, if I talk. So what you can do is you can develop a model out of it, have some uh, retailing. So you go ahead with the structural model 
you actually make a full model out of it. You can prepare a partial model. You can see that flows are working fine. You have the beams in proper grid and al grid aligned. And then you go for the structural analysis here. Let me just uh, take the pen also. So what you can see is you can get an analysis report out of it. So there are many, many softwares involved in the BIM. So many, many softwares are there, uh, which gives you the service from a modeling out of, from the modeling to a analysis approach. So this is where it is very important for an structure engineer to actually observe the behavior of the building and to come out with the actual feature and actual detail, uh, actual design that how the building would behave and what all I would need to, uh, to sustain that building or to, to design that building so that it stays for whatever I'm expecting out of it. So this is where this uh, platform actually works. You can see uh, see down there that there's a, uh, there are a lot of detailing is done. So this is reinforcement detailing has been done. Then there are MEP lines which are going. Then there is a floor which you can see. Then there are some uh, utilities of the architectural uh, lookout. So everything, then their sofas are there. So you can see a single platform where you can actually visualize every single thing. So this is what BIM actually helps. So then you can, then this is all uh, like visualization of the design, 3D detailing interface. So all this can be done just by the use of BIM platform. So going more ahead now, and I am going into deep in the depth of how detailing of the, how steel connections, whatever detailing it is in the structures can be benefited from this platform. So whatever right now we are preparing you, everyone knows that in the initial, uh, initial stages when we used to develop the drawings. So it was just pen and the paper where we used to develop the drawings. Then we came up, uh, then the people came up with new softwares, which were called as CAD. So CAD softwares actually, they promoted or they helped you with the 2D modeling. Then they were 3D modeling also. Now we have, we are in more advanced, uh, advanced scenarios where you can actually come out, come up with the 3D modeling. So what actually, uh, how the 3D modeling is helping, you can see these two images. One side, it is a 2D image, other side is a 3D image. So basically, 2D, 2D image, you can see the gusset plates. And what a gusset plate is that you are getting a connection from the column and the beam. You, so you have a plate which connects this diagonal member. So this diagonal member gets connected by this and you have the bolts in here. So might there might be people who can question that what are these holes we are not understanding since it is a 2D model. So once it is in a 3D model, you can actually visualize because you might have, you might have seen these visually in, uh, by the eyes also when you are going anywhere around in the site, when you are going in the bridges, in the steel connection, wherever you see the steel connections, you might see these kind of junctions. You go into the metros, you just board into the metro, you will see the PB connection, uh, the, the roof connections. You will always find such kind of things where there are some members going and getting connected with some plate. So this is called a gusset plate. So it is easy to visualize and inspect. And at the same time, if I'm going into the depth of detailing, which uh, Watsal might also touch or you, people might be knowing that is called as LOD. So level of detailing or level of development. So it goes to 200, 300, or maybe beyond that 400, 500, where these kind of detailing gets very easy. And you can actually develop the bolt holes and everything in, in the same uh, platform itself. And you can come up with such beautiful, uh, at the same time, much detailed and more uh, introspected uh, views where you can utilize the uh, utilize the the software for this better approach. So this is what uh, I'm just showing here. Next, let's go to some RCC detailing. So in earlier times or today also, we do develop such 2D details where we have the reinforcements, we have the shear reinforcement, the, the top reinforcement, bottom reinforcement we provide. But what if I can develop a 3D out of it? So once I'm developing a 3D, yes, the time would be there. I'm not saying the time, um, time would be less. Yes, you have to develop, you have to give time to this software also. So, but once this, uh, this platform is giving you this opportunity to come up with a 3D detail plan. So what you can achieve out of is that uh, people can easily visualize for the site also, if they can easily visualize it, what are the shear reinforcement, how much the length and the ring would be like, uh, Watson would be uh, dealing with the bar bending schedule. So it becomes easy for you to get the bar bending schedule out of it. From 2D, you can only see a depth. And you have to also see the cross section where you can find this section. But in, in 3D only, you can actually visualize that it's, it's a rectangular uh, ring, which has some length and dimensions, which can easily go into the bar bending schedule. And you can just come out with the bar bending schedule whenever you are playing, when you are placing the bars in a 3D modeling. So this becomes easier because at the same platform, you are single-handedly using 
uh, a 3D a 3D development from where you can actually develop the schedule out of it on a single platform. So this is very uh, eventful platform for you for the BIM. So you can here see that shear enforcement at the shear zone is very closely tied. And once you are going into the center of the beam, you can actually see that the spacing is uh, more. So this is how the detailing is done. And you can actually visualize much better in the BIM platform. So now I want to actually focus on the Metro viaducts where actually I am working. So actually I was being introduced as one of the engineers working for the RTS project. And you must have seen that it has been inaugurated uh, two, three months back where, and we are actually developing on this project to complete sooner. And this will facilitate from Delhi to Merit. So, so uh, we, if you are going to see these uh, Metro viaducts, so what you can visualize is this all metro wider can be done uh, perfectly fine in BIM. And you can see that every possible detail, like these are called as peers. And then there's a peer cap here. Then there are the platforms. Then on the platform, um, there, is a P, uh, there is a PV roof, which is being connected. So everything is being modeled single-handedly over a single, uh, single uh, BIM platform. And you can actually visualize everything. There's a track here. So this gives an insight that how this software is benefiting you to the next level. Now let's move such kind of detailing, which, which uh, if you are uh, working out in a 2D platform would be, would not be that easy for, uh, for people to understand. Yes. Uh, yes, we do work on the 2Ds and there's no, um, we can't say that it's not able to work, but yes, if you're visualizing into 3D, then it's much easier for things to develop on the site. And I will show some of the issues on the site, which, which can be easily sorted out when you are having such kind of 3D backhand done, already done. So you can see these are the, these are called the peers, peer enforcement is there. So at times it becomes highly congested due to the reinforcement detailing. So we can visualize that, yes, there is a lot of, uh, whether there is a gap between the reinforcement, whether you can actually pour the concrete because it's important that the concrete should bind should bind with the reinforcements. That is the main criteria for the strength. So you have to have these concrete and reinforcement getting bind. So these kind of details actually help you that how much spacing we have and how the concrete can pour down because it has to go down deep to the con uh, to the column so that it's it behaves as one unit. So here also there's a there's a pile here there's a pile cap so pile reinforcement has to come top on the top to uh, to the top of the pile cap and everything is interconnected so we have to have the study well before uh, the site uh, with the site execution so already we are doing with the 2ds but yes if there's a 3d then yes it it will speed your work it will actually keep, give you insight that how it will be on the site then again uh, um, see, hello yes. Abhinav, I'm so sorry for interrupting you. Yes, but as of now, um, your presenter view is on the display. So we can see two screens, one your this slide and the next slide. Uh, so can okay. you change your display settings so that uh, okay. only your current slide is visible to everyone because both the slides appear small. Oh, is it? Uh, yes. Okay, because what I can see is this. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Let me check. Mm, just... Sorry. I think it would be part of the uh, PPT only. I guess you can do it from the display settings. Uh, uh, from the, the PPT top. itself. At right? the top, yes, yes. At the top, you can see the center option over here. Yeah, let me check. Wait. The second option. Second option. Yes. Okay. So I think this is duplicating the slide. Yes. No, I think it is with the PPT only. Let me just. Again no, we can it. also see the next slide on the right side. No? Ah, understood. Understood. Yeah. I think there's some display. Huh? Yeah, you have to change it from display settings. Do you have any just Can you guide me? Uh, uh, the second, after show task, but there is a second option, display settings. Yes, it is there. It and is there, there is a drop down button here. No. 
can you try just duplicate slideshow? Okay, let me check. Is it working fine now? Uh, one second. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Sorry, sorry for that. Oh, I don't, oh, okay, the slides are moving fine now. Okay, so let me come back. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, yeah, so what I was actually trying to show that if you can see this junction, where you can see the beam, um, the beam detailing, the column detailing, at the same time, there's a cantilever portion, which is also having some details of the reinforcement. And if you can see in the deep, there is some bolting connections also. So the different different two type two type of connections where uh, where there is a beam detailing from for the reinforcement and there is a structural uh, structural section detailing structural steel sections uh, for which there is a bolt connection. So you can actually also visualize that how much the bolt should go inside and what how to place these bolts uh, while concreting so it should not get displaced. So these kind of things actually help you while uh, executing on site because it will have a visualization that yes how the work will actually be happening on the site. So this is one of the benefits. Um, yes, not, on, or not only in the elevated, but yes, if you are going to the underground, which is actually one of the most integral, most important part in the metros. So where the tunneling system actually works, where the TBMs are there, the machines which actually go into the ground and they actually uh, open up the whole ground so that there is a space for these kind of structures to come. And you can always see there are big massive structures which are going deep under the ground. And these kind of structures necessarily require such kind of BIM platforms where you can visualize and inspect much before you're going into the execution because these kind of things will help, actually help you in the uh, systematic planning of how the execution would be done. Because there are a lot of services, a lot of things are there which you have to cater so these kind of tunneling, the, how the machine would actually auger down and how these um, these are four poles which are actually getting placed over the over these these kind of support systems which uh, which is connected to the ground. And so you are coming up with such kind of um, section structural systems. So yes, these these are very beneficial because right now I'm explaining you, you might be getting an idea that how the construction actually works. So even just by a single slide, you can actually visualize the concept involved in underground. So automatically this, be this becomes a great platform. So now I can again go with some of the, uh, some of the day-to-day -day problems. Um, but before that problem, if you can see, this is a very small, this is a cantilever construction, um, which you might, uh, might be seeing at many uh, bridge locations. So what actually happens is this is, this is not on support. There's no ground support involved. And you have a, you have a mechanism which moves ahead so when this is a form traveler, which, uh, which moves ahead, which has some concrete in it, which has some reinforcement. And when it is constructed, it again moves ahead, just, just becoming a cantilever load on these, uh, these kind of sections and it moves and it forms a complete, complete body, the structural body. So, so you, right now, what you can see is this is the actual site, site photo, and this is a much detailed one at the software itself. So what you can see is. So the both the things are same and you can actually visualize the same at the by sitting just on the computer and when you're reaching on the site the same thing has been executed so yes the visualization is there and you can very well get benefited out of it so definitely these kind of these kind of structures can deliver structures are very critical and critical to handle on site and yes if you have this kind of uh, visualization then it gives you a lot of confidence while you go on the site, because you have you know that what is being what it will be the construction, how it will be seen and executed. Uh, next is uh, yes, we do face some kind of interface problems. Like if you have one of the elevated structure on one side, and on the other side you are just going deep in the ramp where you will go inside underground. So this is the portion where you will go down. This is called as ramp going underground, and on the other side there is the elevated structure. So in between, at times there's a there's a slab. Like if you can see, there's a dimension of 2500. So at times there is some dimension which has to be left for the uh, for the later design or for the later construction because this part is being carried out by uh, by one elevated people and this is being done by the underground people. So what happens is that this part might get uh, might get, might get overlooked or if you do not see or you not execute at the same time. So what happens is this becomes an interface issue. 
So this has to be resolved much. If you can resolve it beforehand, it's easy because you know once once on site, once you are going on the execution, you don't have time or you can't you can't bear on the uh, bear on the time because you have to complete this structure as a whole. You can't leave this behind. So yes, if you can plan it before, it's easy because it has some other configuration. This has some other configuration with respect to slopes, with respect to different alignments. And yes, this part becomes the joinery of these. So yes, this is called as interface where you need to have focus. And these kind of platforms can actually give you that insight at how it can be worked out. Uh, next, you can see uh, what I'm actually trying to focus is the because you can see this kind of heavy construction activities. And there's a lot of temporary works which are uh, being placed under the structure to come up with, with, the, uh, with these kind of uh, metro-like viaducts and structures. So if you can all, if you can visualize this or you can uh, play, uh, you can plot this in the software itself on the BIM platform itself, it's, it's, it's just about getting easier. It, it's getting, getting about um, solving problems on the software itself rather than going on discussing over the site. So it, it might get easier for everyone to even inspect, even see that yes, the, uh, the construction would be like this, the foam works would be like this and everything would be well placed while you're on the site. So this is, you can actually visualize that this is a heavy construction is being done on the site. Uh, next, next one more example I want to take uh, from the site itself that these are called as the U shell portals where there's a, there's a pier. Then um, at times you have uh, something going in uh, under the ground or uh, just over the ground, be, just below this. So you can't put your columns in between. So you need to have some portal system uh, where uh, to just uh, to just bridge this gap so that uh, your viaduct, your metro or whatever your services are or the highways, it can move above and below you have that open space for the ad grade, uh, ad grade services to move. So since you are creating a portal out of it, so portals, uh, if you can see this in the cross section, so it appears to be like this. So there's a U, U section. So this is a U section. Uh, and this U section has a lot of reinforcement. At the same time, which I want to try, which I'm trying to focus is that there's a pre-stressing concept involved here. They are the pre-stressing cables. If you can see deep, then they are the circulate, circulate circles here. So these, these are called the cable ducts. So you place, uh, you place the cables inside and you stress them. So, and you then bring this whole section over here. And again, there are some of, uh, and this, this, these cables are stressed in some stages. So it is not that we stress uh, all the cables at the same time. So uh, based on the design, it comes out to be like two or three stages uh, where we stress these cables. So once you are here, you again, uh, once you are at the site, uh, at, at, the, at, the, uh, at the yard, you stress some of the cables so that it is stable. Then you come up at the site where you again, uh, again, try to stress. So what happens? Then you can see that there's a lot of congestion here that already there's a peer reinforcement. Then these, these protruding reinforcement, which you are again on the site. So these have come, come out. And again, you have to have some cables which are coming out. So this kind of junction become very critical. And if you cannot, if you cannot hold these uh, junction to the best, it will it will um, create problems because it is it is a junction which is helping you create this portal. So you have to have these uh, these uh, properly detailed and properly executed on the site because this is an individual behavior individual thing right now. This is individual. So this junction is actually playing you a very crucial role here. So this is a kind of uh, section which you can see and the plans. Now let me come to the uh, some of the junction details. So you can see that th this is heavily, heavily reinforced. These are the cables, these are the ducts. You, if you can just zoom in, you can't see, this was the duct which I was showing you earlier, which has been already executed. No, so, and there's a reinforcement coming out. There are some vertical reinforcement from the pier. There is a wider cable, uh, sorry. Uh, these are the pre stressing cables, which is coming out. So it becomes very, very crucial junction. And if you can detail this well before uh, in the software itself, you can actually have an insight that yes, because these have some profile, you can't just play with the profile. You have to follow this cables profile. So when this uh, cables come out with some coordinates, so you have to follow that. So you cannot miss guide, misjudge them. So you have to have these cables in the proper placed placement. So once they are in the proper placed, and when you pour the concrete inside, they should not uh, be uh, be uh, moved from. They should not move from their place. And this all thing happens at the site. 
so if you can manage this in the software you can actually visualize the, if you cut the section you can actually see that yes there's an enforcement you need to have these split spacing so that it is managed so these kind of side issues we do feel uh, we do face when we go on the site we do check and we try to resolve these things on the site but if you are getting in the software why not to take that help of the software and develop much before if you can but this requires time and this requires expertise which watsil can guide you through and he will just explain that how these things work on the on the platform uh, so in the last just i have to explain some of the things that interface management using the bim so there is a contractor who can um, who can initiate things on the system at the same time an engineer is working the sub the subcontractors are working together on a single platform on the single bim model and then you are again coming up with yeah with the different uh, flow plans where these kind of stuffs are there from the mep modeling and everything and these can be well connected into a single uh, into a single building and this is called as where where the interface uh, interface management is there that everyone is coordinating on a single platform coming up with single model and that is where the single model will be actually executed on the site um, next is uh, what i was talking about the csd approach so that is the combined service uh, service drawings which we uh, which we get out of these kind of platforms where you have a detailed um, uh, detailed uh, plans like these are the uh, there is an architectural plan there is a structural uh, things which you can see the slabs the beams members and then you can actually see the services also going so in a single model you can fetch everything very easily uh, with all these services and everything well aligned in a single software so yes these kind of things can be well checked uh, you can actually see that yes uh, everything is working fine and it can be well executed on the site uh, so lastly what uh, i will be end ending with these kind of these uh, these points which we can collect like it is a very important platform where you can actually complete the interactions uh, every stakeholder whosoever it is from the client to the contractor to the to the design developers they can all come up with the platform so you, everyone can utilize this to the maximum then you visually i am trying to use this uh, visual i don't know how many times i have used this visual words but yes it is very important because it gives you a critical inspection and under understanding of the structure because yes what we are creating is a structure which is which is the vital and very important uh, building or whatever building bridges which is very important for each and every one of us so we have to be very critically thinking about this while designing while executing and while plan, making it work in a better way and then structural detailing yes we can't skip structural detailing it is on the drawings it is the main insight of what structure engineer is wanting it to happen on the site and yes if this is executed in the way it has been detailed then the structure works fine and for his for its total life it would be the uh, it would be the best for it to behave and remain remain in its static way where where it has to uh, where it has to be so yes um, is the, with this i am ending my uh, presentation uh, so thank you all and the question answers i can take or we can take in the end also so yeah what's up yes sir we'll have the question answers in the end sure sure so yeah. thank you sir for your guidance thank you. um thank you you can stop share sir i'll just share my screen Yes, thank you. I hope my screen is visible. Okay, so now we'll be talking about the role of BIM in Reba modeling. So how we can use uh, Reba modeling in the BIM part, uh, how we can uh, develop the Reba modeling in Revit. So we'll just see uh, what basically can be done about that. So when we talk about BIM for Reba detailing, there are, a, there are some key differences between AutoCAD and Revit. So if I just list them out in short, uh, in CAD, you basically draft everything. Suppose you have to create a detail of any Reba, you'll have to draft every single detail. But when you talk about BIM or when you talk about Revit, you basically basically model everything. So you're creating a live model for the Reba. For, uh, you have the vectors in uh, CAD. Since you're making lines, it is a vector-based software. So you're making lines over there, so it, it is in vectors. But in Revit, you have all the data. 
in AutoCAD, uh, the thing is sync. So in case you have to change any detail, suppose you have to change the detail for a column, you'll have to again uh, change the detail for the section, you'll have to change the detail for the elevation. But over here, when you talk about BIM, BIM everything is synchronized. You change uh, a detail at a certain place and everything would be changed uh, along with that, along with the schedules. Then there are some red linings over there uh, in AutoCAD whenever you have any like clashes over there. So you create uh, details for that, uh, call out details or anything like that for that. But over here in Revit, uh, you can basically get the ca uh, clashes over there. Suppose you, your pa somewhat a pipe is uh, basically clashing with the Riva. So you'll see that it is clashing and you can resolve it beforehand. Then uh, in AutoCAD, you'll have to create multiple files for the Reba model or any other model. Architecture model is different, structure model is different. But in Revit, uh, in BIM, you have a federated model for all the uh, disciplines over here. So BIM basically allows you in visualizing a virtual reproduction uh, of the re reinforcement junctions in 3D model. Uh, it basically helps you correct the problems before sending the model. Uh, and drawings uh, before the execution, you get all the solutions uh, before you execute anything. And it enables the seamless coordination among various disciplines. Uh, it helps in resolving clashes uh, in re of reinforcement and precast cables as well with pipes and other services. So that is how basically the BIM for Reba detailing works. Now Revit has two types of Reba, it is a shape driven Reba, first of all. So it gets the bar geometry from a Reba shape family. So there's an inbuilt family in Revit that has a multiple uh, that has multiple types of Reba family, Reba shapes over there. You can select any one of them and then you can use it in your model. Apart from that, if there's anything that is not there in the family, you can even sketch that. Uh, like you can even sketch that shape over there and then uh, it will be uh, modeled automatically so bar expands to fill the host uh, and then manual and automatic constraints drive the bar geometry so uh, if you see uh, in revit uh, those who already are working in revit already know that there are planes in revit so you need to select in which plane you want to model the rebar and the work plane as well so uh, as you can see there are certain shapes over there uh, which you can select and since these are only shapes you'll have to obviously uh, change the properties the properties will include the size of the bar uh, so you can change the bar size over here and then further it will be modeled so you'll get a shape like that somewhat and the eventual uh, like the final output would be somewhat like this where you can also space the rebar as you can see you have the spacing option over here you can give a proper spacing between the bars automatically it will be modeled then there's a free form rebar so these types of uh, rebars are basically used in complex shapes where you cannot directly like just model a rebar so you have the free form option over here uh, gets the bar geometry from selected host faces since it is a complex shape it might have host faces so it is a host driven process bars can have any geometry as per host faces Manual and automatic constraints again drive the bar geometry. And there's an aligned distribution among the bar. So that is also there. So there's an option of free form rebar as well as aligned rebar. Uh, so we just see the line distribution right now. Uh, so you have this uh, surface where you select the surface and after that you select the path, which helps you in creating the rebar throughout. So this rebar again can be uh, spaced out automatically and you can give a spacing between them. The rebar shape, the rebar uh, size, the rebar width, basically the diameter of the rebar can also be set through the properties panel. Then there's a surface distribution option where you just need to select the surface uh, where you want to model the rebar and this will be modeled automatically. The shape uh, can be taken automatically since this cannot be easily like sketched or you don't have a shape similar to this in Revit. So you can just uh, select the surface distribution option and it will be made. After that, there are some examples that we have got, uh, like in what all uh, spaces we can uh, take rebar. So over here, if you just see, uh, we can we have the wall rebar. So you can do the rebar in the wall easily. If you want to create any lintel beams also, you can do that too. Apart from that, there are cutouts in wall. The cutouts can automatically be, be created. And there are several bends that you can create over there uh, in case of RCC wall, obviously. So this can be easily done in the walls part. 
then you have columns in columns suppose you have a column that is that is round so you can also create a round spiral uh, column over here that has a specific rebars and as well as rectangular columns you can again uh, also have the stirrups uh, aligned automatically different shapes of stirrups are there then there's also a base plate uh, situated over there that also connects to the column so everything here can be very easily modeled in revit then we, when you come to rebar examples for the beams, uh, beams as you can see here, if I just show you example, there are two stirrups. There is a outer stirrup and there's an inner stirrup. So this can also be easily modeled over here, and this will somewhat like look like this over here. Uh, there are specific distances that you can give. Suppose there is a beam that you need to uh, you need to you need to change distances in a beam. So you can do that. You can create different sets of rebar and then change this distances for different sets. So that also works over here very easily. So you just need to model one bar and all the other bars you can automatically like uh, display over here. Then we come to the example where we have the staircase. So if you just see this is the option where you have just directly modeled the staircase. And over here you have the color coding. The, this color coding would help you differentiate on the different bars. So suppose this bar is of 8 mm, this green one can be of 10 mm. So this helps you in differentiating there. So you know which type of rebar is what when you're viewing, in, viewing it in 3D or well, well as in the plans. So you know the color code of all the rebars and then uh, you can automatically understand what type uh, of rebar you're doing and you can work it out on the site as well very easily. So after this, I'll just uh, show you a live example of Revit. So I hope my screen is, Revit screen is also visible. Okay. So I have this small model, uh, since there is some shortage of time, I cannot develop a very complex model. So I'll just show you it, uh, show it to you over here. This is just a small model. I'll just show it to you over here. So I'll just, I have just uh, created some sections. If I just go to the foundation level, so I've created a section of the footing over here. So if I just go to the footing section and I select the footing after selecting the footing, I have the rebar option over here. So I just need to go to the rebar option. And as you can see, there are different shapes over here that you can just select and place any shape. So I'll just uh, take any shape as of now. Suppose I'll take M02 over here. I can just select it and I, I can just bring it over here. Apart from that, if I want to change the size, I can just go to edit type. Suppose I'll take this bar as 12 mm bar. And I'll also change the model bar diameter to 12 mm as well as the bar diameter to 12 mm. So I'll just place it over here. So you also have different placement options. You can just look out uh, for that too. I'll just place it over here and I'll just select it. And after selecting it, I also have this uh, like spacing option over here. So if I just, uh, just a second, so I have the layout option in the layout option. I want a minimum or a maximum spacing of 150 ml. Just a minute. I'll give a maximum spacing of 150 mm. Uh, and I need to turn this uh, visibility, its visibility in the 3D also. So I'll just turn it on. And uh, if I now go to 3D, so you can see this rebar has been placed. Right. Likewise, you can place it uh, in the other direction too. So I have section 2 also over here. So I'll just select the footing and I can just go to rebar. And I'll uh, like place the same rebar also over here. So you also have the option where you can just uh, like move the rebar accordingly. You can just move it according to your requirement. Again, I'll just change it from single to maximum spacing. And this I'll take as 150 mm. So I can change it from here too. Now let's turn this on as well as in 3D. So now if I just go to 3D. So it has been modeled. Likewise, we model it for the column as well as for the beam. So I'll just show you to you for a beam, say, since there is some shortage of time as well. So I have this beam. Uh, if I want to uh, reinforce this beam, I can go to rebar. And then uh, you have different options. In these options, you also have the stirrups. So if I just come down to the stirrups option, so you see you have stirrups too over here. So this is a stirrups where you have a different bend that is bended inside. And this is a normal stirrup. So I'll just select this stirrup 
uh, and I'll go to edit type. I'll take a 8 mm bath instead. This I'll change to 8 mm again. So the process over here, as you can see, is very easy. You just need to select the shapes and then you can just place them directly over here. If you want to change, uh, if you want to basically change the, uh, uh, the, the there's been an option of the cover option is there. So if you want to change the cover, you can also change the cover of the beam. That option is also there in the structure tab over here. If you see there's this cover option, so you can also change the cover option for different elements over here. Likewise, I'll just uh, take this and give a spacing of again 150 mm. I'll also place some more bars. So again, I just need to select this and I go to reinforcement option just a minute. And I'll just select a longitudinal bar over here. Uh, and this I'll take as say 16 mm bar. And for this, I need to obviously change the plane. So the placement plane would be same, but I'll change the perpendicular since it is going inside the beam. So I'll just select this and this I'll change to uh, a fixed number that would be three so that it is placed properly. And then I can just mirror it. Just a minute. I've just mirrored it. I'll just select these two bars together and turn the visibility on and see. Again, just turn it on in 3D for the stirrups as well. Now, when we go to 3D, uh, you can see the beam has been modeled. Obviously, as I said, you can, uh, I have also applied some color codes over here for the 16 mm bar. You can see there's a blue color. So uh, this works easily. Uh, now, since you've modeled it in one footing, you want to model this into different footings as well. So if you see there's a different size in footing, this footing is of 2400 by 1800. And this footing, uh, just a minute, I have a smaller footing. So I'll take a smaller footing instead. Okay. So I have a different size of footing as well. So uh, if I just select the rebar over here, I have the propagate option when I can, where I can just select the similar bar and take it to different footings and place it in that too. So I'll just select propagate rebar and I have the align by host option where it would be, it would be aligned to all the hosts. So you can see this has taken the rebar uh, according to this formula where we took a spacing of 150 mm. It has also taken this formula in this Footing, whether it is a small footing or a bigger footing, it has taken the same formula and you can just uh, rebar it in different ones. Now, if you want to change a setting over here, you can do it manually. This wouldn't change everything or everything in each footing. So it can be individually done. Same goes uh, for the beams and different elements. If I want to like just, I'll just select the beam and I'll filter out the rebar. And then I can just propagate this too. So just a minute. I'll go to propagate and I again have the line by host option. So I can align it in different options. Now if you want to uh, simply just uh, rebar a wall. So you need to make sure that it is a structural wall over here. And then you have a different option where you can rebar it entirely. So if I just go to any elevation uh, and then I can just go to steep. Uh, structure basically I have the area reinforcement option where I can just select it and I can just sketch the area over here and that's it. I need to again turn this on in 3d so this is very mandatory over here what you want to see in 3d and what you don't want to so I'll just turn it on in 3d so over here you can see the rebar has been modeled in the wall as well right so that is how you do it in different elements. Also, I have a curved wall, so I want to show it to you for that too. I have the rebar option. So I have the distribution option where you can just uh, do it according to the surface. You can align it. Right. So I'll just align it. So I'll select the host surface. Just a minute.
just a minute. I guess there's some problem. Now the align uh, where I select the host, uh, there's another option over here. Do you select the end surface? Just a minute. Uh, I guess that's not visible right now. Okay. So we can do it in these types of walls too that I just wanted to explain. Apart from that, if I just go to any section once, uh, I have a section over here. If I want to uh, bring out these details, I just need to select that particular detail and I have the bending detail option over here. So you can just bring out the bending detail where you get the entire bending detail that is present. So there is a 200 mm over here. This is 1720 mm. So you can just bring it out and place it. Uh, apart from that, you can also create a bar bending schedule. So to create a schedule, I'll just go to schedules option and I'll create a new schedule and quantities. In this, basically, I'll take structural rebar. And in the structural rebar, as you can see, there are different options. There is A, B, C, D. So these are basically uh, these options that are there. This can be A, this can be B, this can be C. So you can just select them accordingly. Right now, I'll just take the bar diameter, the bar length, uh, the bend diameter as well. Also, I need the family and type. Just a minute. and the bending detail is also required host category is required that on which host the rebar is placed uh, the quantity is required also the spacing right so these are these are the things that is that are required also we also require the total bar length so we can just uh, or accordingly work them out. I'll just move this at the top. I'll bring the bending detail at the bottom. This host category also needs to be at the top. So I've created a schedule over here. I'll just click on OK. So the entire schedule has been created. Just a second. I'll just uh, make this a little more visible. If you just see over here, uh, I have the entire family and type which Reba we are talking about. The host categories are there, whether it is a wall, whether it is a foundation, whether it is a beam. So beams basically are denoted by structural framing over here. Then we have the bar diameter, we have the bar length. Apart from that, we have the quantities that are present in the Reba set. There's a spacing option where you have the spacing options. Total bar length is there and also the bending detail. So bending detail right now over here, it just shows as bending detail. But when I just take this uh, rebar to a sheet, so I'll just create a new sheet. And when I just drag this to a new sheet, just a minute. Okay. So over here, you see you have the bending detail as well. Now, now this size has been changed basically. Uh, the size of the text can also be easily changed if I just go to the schedule back. So from the formatting option, I can also change the size. So I'll just take the bending detail and I can edit and change the size over here. So right now a size of 2.5 mm is there. So you can just directly just uh, take any text and you can just change the size uh, from there. So that is how a schedule is created. Apart from that, if you want to also calculate the weight of the bar, you can do that too. For that, you need to go to the fields option and you can create a formula. So the formula, if I just uh, tell you the formula, it is D square uh, into one, D square by 162.2 and that is multiplied by the total bar and that can also be inserted over here and then you'll also get the bar weight. Right. So that is how the entire bar bending schedule works over here in Revit. So, uh, that is all that is there from my side. I'll just stop share and we are open to questions. If there are any questions, I'll just look at the chat box. Yes, Watson, you can check the questions. If yes, I'll just, I'll just check. I think so there is one. Yeah, uh, I think there is one question which uh, 
one of the person have asked that uh, we should focus on uh, the email and i think you have covered these kind of things like yes, yes. Of i have covered and, everything i guess it was yeah. uh, more about the ppt that you were talking about yeah 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 so what i was what i that what i was sharing was my experience and what we can actually implement at the bim platform and what Watson has guided you that how you can implement the same via the software and how. And I was explaining why and where and what is my issues. And as a client, if I am there, then what I need from, from this platform. And the platform serves this way is being explained by Watson. Am I right, Watson? Yes, sir. Okay, so there's one question. How do we set boundary conditions for the rebars like the anchorage length, lap length, hook length, etc. based on the diameter of the bar? Also, is quantity takeoff of rebars possible? If yes, how can we apply bend deductions? So, as I just showed, we have the uh, quantity takeoff easily available in Revit. Apart from that, how you create lap lens, hook lens, there's the option of hooks too. You can uh, like just easily check that. We'll have to go into detail for that. So, that option is easily available in the software as well. Any other questions? Uh, can we add shape in the bar bending schedule? Yes, I just showed you. We have the bending detail option that is there in the bar bending schedule. You can just bring that to the sheets option and then you will be able to see the shape over there along with the dimensions as well. How to make total quantity of bars? So you, in the schedule option, you have a option where you can apply formulas. So if you want to calculate the number of bars according to the length, since a bar length is, I guess, 12 meters, according to that, you can calculate the number of bars. And also, if you want to calculate it through the weight, I told you the formula, you can apply that, and you get the weight of the bar as well. Yes, uh, couplers can also be used. Uh, detailing code, if you talk about the detailing code, the couplers can also be used. It is in basically LOD uh, 400, I guess, where you like develop all the details. But the couplers option is also there in the rebar option. We can, uh, I'll have to go into detail for that. So since this is what, this was an overview of the rebar. So I just showed you those options over there. How can we show bar shape in schedule? So as I just told you, I'll just share my screen again, since a lot of people have that doubt. So what I did was, uh, I created a new sheet. And in that sheet, uh, I hope my screen is visible, just a minute. In that sheet, I dragged this rebar option. Uh, I brought it over here. So you have the rebar shape along with the sizes. This size can also be changed easily. We have the option for that too. Again, that we have to go into depth for that. So you can get the bending detail easily also over here, as well as in the sections where you talk about the shape, you can bring this two in the sheet. So over here also the shape would be available. The shape code bar mark comes in the re bar in the BBS and drawing. Uh, yes, the bar mark can also be brought if you use the tying option. You can get that too. In case of putting length of bars automatically calculated or we have to enter the length manually. So you'll have to do it for a, a single footing. After that, if the footing size changes, but the bar uh, spacing and the bar type is same, you can just uh, propagate it to different footings and it will be automatically placed over there with that spacing as well as that bar diameter. So that is how it works over there. Okay, so these are some questions how to place a reinforcement in pre cast It is done the same way like we did in the normal uh, footings and the normal beams. It is done in the same way. Uh, can you please show how to apply bend deductions to the rebar? So that, uh, again, I'll have to go into depth for that. Yeah. 
actually whatever Vatsal is saying, everything is possible in this kind of platforms. The only thing is, uh, as an engineer, if you know that uh, what would be the lap length, how to bend, what is the hook length, as whatever the code says, that everything and anything can be well implemented on the platform. It is very easy doing that. So it is just just like a tool, whatever you can do in any CAD platform that you give a length to the bar and the bar gets, and the bar gets, um, you have the hook proper. I think he will be showing something. Yes. So these kind of detailing can be easily done. So there is no, yeah, please. Okay. So I just wanted to show you that there are different options when we talk about a rebar. Uh, just a second. I just escape. So you have a rebar coupler option also over here where you can just, uh, like, attach coupler. So if I just click on this, there are different couplers. So uh, I being an architect, you guys know better which coupler has to be used over here. If you want to place it at the end or if you want to place it between two bars, that option is there. Apart from that, in the type property, just you get everything over there. Uh, <clears throat> there is a fabric sheet option uh, where you can uh, place a fabric sheet. Basically, the rebar option is also there. Uh, that is that can be done over here. Then you have the cover option where, they, where you can change the covers for different type of elements. Uh, can just work on that too very easily. Right. So these options are all of them over here. Yes. So lap length is also there in the type properties. You can change that also from there. Just a minute, I have like uh, one or two more questions. Uh, if any changes happened at concrete model, so we need to change the T-bar model also. Yes, you need to change that, but uh, at times what happens is whenever you change the concrete model, the Riva shape is automatically uh, like deducted. If you change the size of the concrete model, so the stirrup shape will deduct itself and also the placement would be taken uh, automatically. Reba CAD 3D for Revit by CADs India and Reba 3D for Revit by Cape Picot. Uh, no, I don't like have any idea about this. So I can't answer that. So thank you everyone for joining. Uh, it was a good session. Thank you, Abhinav, for, Abhinav sir, for being there and guiding us through this. Uh, welcome. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for staying this long with us. Thank you so much. So I'll just end the session. Thank you. Everyone.